Hey, Chris Lipe here with In the Style of Matt Bellamy from Muse. Expressive, aggressive, yet primarily clean, and an incredible amount of control. He's also very good at singing forward and enunciating in a certain way that just draws you in to everything he sings. Before we go any further, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and turn those notifications on. And a lot of the things that we're going to be doing in this video as we unpack Matt's voice are not foundational singing things. If you don't have a handle on support, on compression, on airflow in general, you are going to have a lot of trouble internalizing what Matt Bellamy does. If you'd like help with some of that stuff, click the link below and join my free vocal course. And you'll get to work on those foundational things, as well as many other techniques and mindsets that will help set you up for a truly free and expressive voice. All right, here we go, example one. And remember, we're not trying to imitate, we're being influenced by what he does, analyzing and internalizing and then putting it into our own voice. Okay, the first thing I wanna point out here is how he gradually opens his vowels. There's a lot more going on. But that's the first thing we want to notice. He does this a lot. Starts closed and then brings things forward. There's this opening that happens where as he's bringing the sound forward, he's also bearing his teeth more. He's allowing this note to, be co to come from a mellowness to a sharpness, but it doesn't feel unpleasantly sharp. It gets more and more brilliant as he opens up. Now, there's a lot of pressure. You can hear that in his voice. This is not all airflow. It's airflow management, but he uses a lot of compression, a lot of clean compression in his middle voice. If I were to sing this without compression, we will be Vic. Now, I'm also doing some tonal things there too. But it's it's flat sounding. It's the same volume. Whee! But if as soon as I start pushing more from here and holding back air, whee! and then brightening my overall sound by raising my larynx a little bit, I'm going to raise my tongue and lower my soft palate. Whee! Whee! And at the same time, add compression. That's the Matt Bellamy sound. And he carries that through his whole range. However, when he starts this, you can hear that happening. You can hear that evolving. Next. Okay, this example is a great place to dial in our compression, our balance between support and actual airflow, actual volume. A fat cat, a fat, a fat, a fat cat, a fat cat, a fat cat. If I'm gonna be extreme about it, that's what's gonna happen. But if I just say, a fat cat, a fat cat's had a heart attack, a fat cat's had a heart attack, no, it's a fat cat's got a heart attack. What happens is, is the, the consonants become more prevalent as we hold back air 
And as we, of course, enunciate a little bit more, but it's not all enunciation. It's not a fat cat's got a heart attack. There's this sense of power, potential power behind that enunciation. A fat cat's, a fat cat's got a... And you can hear that air being held back. A fat cat's got a heart attack. A fat cat's got a heart attack. A fat cat's got a heart... You know, if we were to really... A fat cat's got a heart attack. But we're not applying the compression to the point of breakup, to the point of grit. Again, this should be happening above the larynx. A fat cat's had a heart attack. A fat cat's got a heart attack. Where you can tell if you're using a good amount of compression is if there's a sort of a letdown after the phrase. Heart attack. And you hear his breathing a lot too. You can hear that, that release and then the <gasps> intense inhales as well. You'll hear some of those in a little bit. All right, next. Okay, now in this example with his head voice, he's using not complete closure. Oh, 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 baby, can you hear me moan? Oh, baby. Uh, 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 you hear that. Uh, oh, and notice the difference. Oh, versus that. It's not, ah, not complete, not this open sound, but not completely closed. It's somewhere in the middle. We don't want to do the Jeff Buckley thing here. Baby, can you hear me moan? That's not what it is. It's a little bit more on the open side in falsetto. Oh, baby, can you hear me moan? You keep that up with this entrance, this breathing entrance. Oh, oh, baby, can you hear me moan? Next. Now, I have this one in here because it's another uh, head voice example. When he's in head voice, he is really contrasting what he does in his chest and his middle mix. Again, it's still forward and there's still a bit of opening, a bit of air passing through that's that's not being held back by our primary chords. Ah, there's also a bit going through the nasal passage that helps him with that brighter, forward, less closed sound. But this, in conjunction with... Ah, as we'll hear in some of the other examples, is not compressed. It is not aggressive. And when you hear him go between them, it creates that really neat angsty sound. Next. Now listen to his vowel. And he's going down there as opposed to sort of squealing at the end of it on this particular example. Hear the gradual opening and manipulation of the vowel. It's not just starlight. Starlight. This becomes more interesting as you hear him deliver an entire vocal performance. It's pretty fun though when you when you actually recognize where this aggression and sort of reaching out to your ears and grabbing them sort of sound is coming from. Also notice the that anticipatory note that goes into that word is again part of that vibe. Next. Now, listen, there's a couple things here. Listen to hold. Hold! As the vibrato kicks in, he closes the vowel. It becomes 
from an O. Oh, oh, and he goes to the O. More of that neat diction, that neat vowel manipulation. And on this example and the last one, I just want to point out again that compression combined with that bright face out of the way sound. Wanting to hold. Now, he also has this neat squeak where he goes just a little bit out of his full chesty sound and it adds to the expressiveness. This is a common thing for a lot of singers. It's this idea that we're we're doing that at the very beginning of words. Let's play with this line a little bit. Put it in our own voices and just see what happens. Wanting to hold Next. Listen to how beautifully and seamlessly he transitions between his chest, that sort of bright chesty mix, and his head voice. He stops the note, here, here. then he goes to his head, here, here. listen to how he says that first word, here, here. and then he stops it. Now, you can't even tell really, there's no break when he goes back in to his chest voice. There's this sense that he's easing back into it. Here, 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 here. You definitely, you definitely hear that because he stops it. Here, here. Although it's not quite that obvious. Here, here, my arms. Here, in my arms. And there's, again, that sense that he's opening up those vowels. And as we exaggerate that quality in our voices, it helps us to really place this concept. And then we can dial it back and make it our own. Next. Now this one, there's a much more obvious transition into his head voice. There's that little flip. And dreaming I'm alive. And dreaming I'm alive. This kind of thing is really fun to play with, where we're, we're building up tension into a head voice note. And dream, and dreaming. How much can we push that to contrast it with the head? And dreaming I'm alive. And dreaming I'm Fun stuff. And dreaming I'm alive. And dreaming I'm alive. And dreaming I'm alive. And dreaming I'm alive. And dreaming. Let those breaths, those inhale breaths, that's another huge Bellamy thing. And dreaming I'm alive. And dreaming I'm alive. Next. Now. 
Now, this is a perfect example of that. I want you now. <laughs> I, I think it's fun to exaggerate him, but it, it, it is very, you don't hear him talk like that. That's part of his singing character. I want you now. I want you now. That sound where you're you're thinking about you're forming it in the back and then gradually brightening it up while simultaneously adding compression. Adjusting your larynx position while you're adjusting your vowel formations. All these things are happening at the same time to bring you this vomiting <laughs> That kind of sound. But tailored back a little bit and then using it to catapult you into a higher, more aggressive state is, is really compelling. It's a, it's a neat thing to have in your arsenal. I want you now. I want you now. That coupled with a, a bit of vibrato. Let's experiment with taking that, and you hear him do this in other songs and in other areas, even of this song, where we go higher and we experiment with that brash head voice to high mixed voice transition. Doesn't do it very often, but it's pretty fun. I want you now, I want you now, dark to bright, I want you now, I want you now, And then working into some of that really brash high stuff. <laughs> Next. Okay, two things. We're starting in head voice and we're in a lower register and listen to his breath. These are, this is a trademark thing. He really, it's almost like he leans into the mic with his breaths, where a lot of people will try to minimize them. Will be the death. Now listen to death. I did it more extreme there. He's subdued there. The death, the death, still not closed, not the death, still very forward, very bright, uh, a lowered soft palate, and a raised back of tongue. Will be, now he could add, will be, just got done hitting those notes. This is a stylistic choice. Will be. The death will be the death will be the death of me. And keep adding more and more power in there. Will be the death. Make up words too. Who cares? Will be the death of my feet. Will be, will be the death of me. How extreme can you take it? How much of a character can you create with this inspiration? Next. Madness. Man, man, I have finally come to realize this is a fun, it's not completely unique to this song, but it's another one of those things that's so stylistically strange 
yet it works with this sort of sinister, uh, in-your-face sound. What can we do with this idea where we slide up to pitches? Man, man, is, man is. And all these little things that he does creates this anxiousness, yet in the midst of extreme control. The way he navigates between head voice and chest voice and, and that, that eerie, highly compressed middle mix. And the way he opens his vowels and adjusts his tone at the same time, not because he has to, but because it allows for this growing, sort of this mushrooming effect of his, of his sound, of his, of his phrases. I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm going, I am going mad, I am going, I am going. I am going, I am going mad, I am going mad, I am going mad. If you liked this video, you'll love my videos on Jeff Buckley and Tom York two fantastic singers that have some similarities to what Matt Bellamy is doing here. And again, if you want to get a better handle on fundamental singing techniques that will help you get to this level of expressiveness, where you can take another singer and input what they're doing into your own voice and make it your own, be sure to click the link below and join my free vocal course. I really enjoy making these sing-like videos. Let me know what other artists and vocalists you'd like me to cover. And be sure to check out the In the Style of playlist for all sorts of vocalists that I've already put on the channel. We'll see you for more.